I thought that it was really interesting to see, you know, what the U.S. government is doing to accelerate 5G development. And news out this week is that the National Telecoms and Information Administration, NTIA, and the Institute for Telecommunication Sciences is collaborating with the U.S. Department of Defense. And they announced just this week the launch of their 5G Challenge preliminary event. The NTIA is located within the U.S. Department of Commerce, by the way, and that's the government agency that's primarily responsible for advising the president on all things related to telecommunications and information policy issues. So that's sort of the connection there. Um, but these programs, um, NTIA's programs and policymaking are centered on conquering the digital divide and expanding broadband access and adoption across America, expanding the use of spectrum by all, and then also ensuring that the internet, and this is when we talk about the digital divide, this is what's so important, you know, ensuring that the internet remains an engine for continued innovation and growth for everyone, not just, you know, people who live in cities and have great internet access, but for everyone across the board. Um, so that's why this is so critically important. Um, this joint initiative and a competition um, illustrates how important cost-effective, secure 5G networks are regarded by NTIA and the Department of Defense. And, um, and it plays a role in national and economic security. And, and I think it goes a long way also of showing the commitment of the U.S. government as a whole in what 5G has to offer. And of course, we know what 5G has to offer. And anybody listening to this show probably has an idea of what 5G has to offer. But it really is great to see government entities stepping up and doing things in this way. So this 5G challenge competition, it's focused on providing an assist with the acceleration of an open 5G ecosystem, including the adoption of open interfaces, interoperable components, multi-vendor solutions. It's also about increasing the resiliency and the security of supply chain, something that we have learned over the past couple of years is incredibly important. And then also um, increasing the diversity of suppliers who are working in and innovating in the 5G ecosystem, which is also incredibly important. So this challenge, it's called the preliminary event, and it's the first of two competitions under this initiative, and it affords an opportunity for companies or developers to submit hardware and or software solutions focused on radio units, centralized unit, distributed unit, 5G network subsystems, so many things. Um, to win a part of a total price purse of up to about $3 million. So this um, preliminary challenge event has launched, launched now, and it's focused on RAN subsystem interoper interoperability, and it's open for applications through May 5th. So you've got a little less than a month there. And then there's going to be a second event next year. This will happen in 2023, and details on that will be coming out, I would guess, about this time next year. So I think it's an it's a, a good way to wrap our show to talk about something you know exciting like this. I hope um, if you're listening and you're working on some cool solutions that you'll get involved in this challenge event. Um, I think it's really exciting. Ron, what about you? Oh, yeah. I think one thing that uh, stood out for me is that this – uh, competition has a keen eye on open RAN technology. Absolutely. <laughs> and yeah, the RU, CU, DU innovation, right. you know, and incentivizing uh, folks to step up and, you know, make a difference uh, right. is, I think, another great example of private public uh, collaboration, being able yeah. to, you know, make uh, an ecosystem advancement in this area. And we all know it's, it's not a secret. The U.S. government is, and it's not the only government, the U.K. and others right. are keen on Open RAN because of, again, supply chain stability. Mm -hmm. And it's another way to really uh, spur uh, domestic uh, productivity in terms of you know suppliers because yeah. as we know with proprietary RAN technology it's limited to a handful of players and uh, none of them are really uh, headquartered in the U.S. Although you know they have a strong presence in the U.S. Uh, companies like Ericsson, Nokia, and Samsung uh, come to mind. However, it's also I think uh, pointing to you know the direction that the U.S. government would like to see. Uh, the 5G ecosystem uh, take. And certainly Open RAN is a big foot in that door, but right. ultimately you know, open 5G uh, networking. And as we know, 
Uh, here in the U.S., we have players like Mavenir, you know, headquartered in Texas. And we also have uh, players such as Altio Star, now part of Rakuten Symphony, uh, by the way. But all, again, you know, a company that uh, is headquartered in Japan and, you know, allied with the U.S. So uh, the upshot is uh, let's drive Open RAN uh, as much as we can in the near term to really help, you know, that uh, part of the market become stimulated. Uh, and demonstrate its metal and the fact that it can really provide a competitive alternative uh, that meets supply chain priorities and national uh, security priorities, as well as you know, uh, spurring uh, U.S. Uh, uh, companies and uh, manufacturing and so forth. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that I think is uh, all uh, well understood, the incentive and the motivation for doing this. Yeah. And I think that, you know, we talk about 5G and, and the important role that it plays in advancing so many things. And the bottom line is that it really does play a big role in national and economic security. And that's what programs like this are intended to spur. And so it's great to see um you know, it's great to see government-led initiatives like this 